Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you for your good and your kind. We ask in Jesus' name you speak to every heart today. We give you praise and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise God. All right, let's get into it today so that we can really be blessed. Has this teaching really blessed you? You know, let me tell you what I needed to do. I needed to write, maybe social media, something, do a video, write, and let me know it has blessed you. It's important you do that. Not even for me, just for yourself. Just the culture, just the culture of saying, knowing not to say thank you. Just being appreciative, just being able to say thank you. So you must be able to write, do a video. You know, you have social media platforms. You know, if someone does something good for you, just be able to say thank you. Don't accept them and just walk away. Praise God. Hallelujah. I'm going to ask for um, two or three feedbacks of how these sermons have helped you. This service is going to be bottom line practical. Yeah. Because this is a service we dedicate to a lot of single people. So it's something we can really help with. I really want to talk. You know, in my mind, I can call in the pastors to join us to talk. You know, it's something bottom line practical. So if this teaching has really helped you, I want three people to come to the microphone. And let's, maybe there's a way you've dealt with an emotional pain. Maybe it's affected your dating relationship or your marriage. I want to come to and come and share. Okay, let's get people. Okay, raise up your hands anywhere you're sitting. This teaching has really, really helped me. Praise the Lord. If, if you have an empty seat, please just um, let them know you have an empty seat. This teaching has really, really helped me. Because if it helped nobody, I should just go home, right? Yeah, because it helped nobody, I'm like, why should I speaking again? This thing has really, really helped me. Yeah. Please give, the, give them the microphone. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay. I'm actually the girl that, that said that she's very attached and attention needy. But after that very day... Hold on. Which... I've met a lot of people now. <laughs> Who? Okay, on Wednesday, I don't know Okay, I on Wednesday, that she, she was... Uh, okay, yes. Tell me, yes. Okay. Okay. After that day, I made that public confession. There has been great, massive improvement. Praise you God. know, I found myself busy, coding, you know. I don't need anybody's attention now. So, praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's great. That's great. That's great. That's pre powerful. Praise God. So, another person I want to share how the teaching has affected you. Yes, there's a lady over there. There's, where? There's, there's someone on the right. There's someone over there. Yes, any microphone can, anyone, the microphone gets too fast. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lady. Please keep your hands up so that they can all come to you. Yeah. Good morning, everyone. Yes, and, and I hope that a lot of you single women, single, single parents, some of you that single parents got to meet Fade Kemi to just inspire her with your story. Fade Kemi, did you see your story go viral? I heard it went viral online. Did you, is it true? Did you hear about it? You know, praise God. Yes, go ahead and speak, ma'am. Um, good morning, everyone. Good morning. In the first the first Sunday, it was 2nd of um, October, yeah. and I was seated there, and I thought, okay, it is my time to be vindicated, because you were really focused on the men, and I thought, okay, yes, I like the way Pastor is, like, attacking them, let them know what they've done, and then, <laughs> and then in the subsequent service, it was as though you were putting a dagger to my heart, and I'm like, now it's coming for me, because... I began to feel very naked. I began to see myself that, okay. God was stripping you away. <laughs> yes, it was like that. And, you know, subsequently, I, I have found out that even though I was wronged by my ex-husband, I now understand that there were so many things I did wrong. So many. And there were wow. so many baggages I didn't take care of. And... Just yesterday, I saw your picture and my therapist, and it represents something very powerful to you me. You saw my picture where? <laughs> my therapist, my personal therapist. Both of you took a picture together. Oh, wow. And these are the things she's been telling me, you know. She says all of these things to me, 
And now coming from a pastor who doesn't know me personally now, I have begun to see that only there are so many things you need to take care of. Stop being needy. Stop asking for too much. Men, I you mean, your father is different from, you know, someone you have a romantic relationship with. And just so many other things that I've written down in the course of the services. So I just want to thank you. Wow. And I've stopped wearing a lot of black. I even made a very bold move to color my hair. So... <laughs> So you notice you used to wear a lot of black before. Ah, use a microphone, use a microphone, yeah? I mean, in my wardrobe, it's just filled with black dress, black pants. I have about 25 or 30 black pants, you know. <laughs> but now you've changed your clothes, you've colored the hair. Yes, yes, yes. You have a new yes, identity. Yes, yes, Oh, yes. that's great. That's great. Yes, over here in front, we have, a, we have a testimony to share in front here. Yes. There's another person that wants to share. Where? Okay, because the camera is closer, just because the camera is closer that way, then it will come to... Woo, woo. No, no, but we can't get you there. You have to find a proper way to... You can stand. Yeah. Will you move towards the audience a little, just because of the lighting? Yeah, okay. Um, okay, so for me, I, I know that I've been able to identify my baggages and patterns in my relationships. So I realized that... Do you, do you want to share one of those patterns that you're able to you identify? Okay, um, so most times I always look for people who are older, um, basically looking for a father figure or a big brother. Yeah. I have a lot of brothers, but because most of the time they were way out of they the country. They were never there for you. They were you. never there. So I always want to find somebody who can actually fill that space. And then when they are not delivering in that capacity, I tend to run away and they don't understand why. So now I understand why I do that and I am working on it. Oh, wow. That's yeah. good. That's good. That, there's a lady over here, just right in front here. Yeah. Will, will you come forward here because of the camera or if they can capture you? Just because of those that are watching online? Yeah. Yeah. T tell me, yeah. We can hear you. You know, you just hold it closer to your mouth, yeah. Okay, um, so the first time I had the mic, I spoke about something I was dealing with, which was that I was dealing with uh, self-esteem, how I saw myself. And um, I've realized with throughout this series that all men are not the same. I mean, I know men are not the same, but you know, we know it theoretically, but practically, sometimes, when we get into relationships, we behave like the person we're dating is the same person as all the guys we've seen in the past. Yeah. So because growing up, I shared my story, um, and it's something that um, the lady that spoke, I think, last week, yeah, she talked, it really, really touched me, because she came to me and she told me that my story really made her to, you know, speak about, I was like, that's, we, there are a lot of women that don't feel they are beautiful. There are a lot of women that don't feel like they are attractive in the conventional sense of, you know, what being a beautiful woman is. So as you can see, I've moved from sitting at the back to moving here because I want to be, I want to re reveal myself more. And uh, I, I don't know if there's a lot of camera guys, like one or two of them, they know me. Every time they bring the camera near to me, I literally do this. Like, don't, don't, don't show me. So the guy knows when he comes, he moves like this and just so, but <laughs> I'm still working on myself, but um, I can say confidently that um, I'm a beautiful woman. Can I give you a hug? And, yeah, sure, you can, yes. Thank you. Yeah, can, thank I, you. can I get a hug? Oh. Oh. You are beautiful. You are beautiful. You are beautiful. <sighs> There's a reason why I should be a pastor. Why should you be a pastor? You get to change lives. You know. Yeah. You know. Praise God. You know, I, I told my children, I said, I'm not sure if I will leave billions like Dan Gutt and others will leave billions. But I'll leave you with a name that everywhere you go to, you will say, oh, your father, he helped me. Oh, your father, he helped me. Oh, your father, he helped me. You know. Praise God. Whew. Wow. Okay, let's, let's come back. Let's come back. 
Come back, come back, come back. Come back. Let me take one more story so I can just, you know. <laughs> I should take, let's take a guy's story. I mean, the love of that want to share their stories. There's a guy. I accept of loads of people that want to share their stories. Online, are they sharing their story? All of you online, put your story in the comment section. So all of you online, put your story. I'm hoping maybe next week, Sunday, we can have a Zoom link where those online can just speak into the live service and ask their questions directly. So if you love that online, let me know if you love that. Yeah, tell me, sir. Yeah. Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, this is quite difficult because uh, I'll, I'll make it very brief. So my first time here was uh, two weeks ago, two Sundays ago. And uh, when I came, I cried a lot, you know, and uh, last Sunday... You, you, you broke down as a man? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> okay, so I met her when I was 19 years, and we dated for four years, and uh, she's five years older than me, and... Uh, so for me, I just was, I was really in love, at least, uh, uh, I mean, I was sure of that. And one thing my, my parents did for me from when I was 13 to 19, I read lots of motivational books. My mom would always buy, you know, motivational books and gift me on my birthdays. So I read books like Purpose Driven Life, Think and Grow Rich, uh, Richest Man in Babylon, Rich Man Poor Dad, you know, Rich Dad Poor Dad. I read a lot of books. So by the time I was 19 and I met her, I was talking things, I'm a very ambitious and visionary guy, and she was the only person that could, you know, match me, you know, intellectually and also mentally, emotionally as well. A lot of ladies uh, of my age at that point were just shallow-minded, you know, so hence why I decided... Perspective, perspective, perspective. Yeah, that's his perspective, yeah. Yeah, you so know. So what happened? So what happened was that I just said, you know what, I'm going to get married to her before she's... 30. And I was just a person. And that's because I thought I would, wouldn't be able to find someone else that could match me, you know, at, at that level. Cut the long story short, got married, first year into marriage, second year, and that's when I realized that I probably didn't marry the wrong person, but I just married at the wrong time. I was not emotionally mature. I thought I was because I, I knew all the books. I read marriage books and all of that because I'm that kind of person. But Reality set in, and I was like, God, you know, uh, my parents are pastors, pastors, family, all of that. So everybody kicked against it. I was the only person that, if at some point I, I felt God told me, go ahead, you know. So everybody left me, and it happened. First year, second year, his son, down the line, another son. Five years, six years, seven years into the marriage, I was like, I'm done. Yeah, you know, and last year would have been 10 years. You know, but one thing I said to myself is that I was carrying all of this, never told my mom, never told my dad. My dad is late, died three years ago, didn't tell him. Never told anybody what I was going through in this marriage. I just kept fighting, I was fighting. At the same time, pushing my career, and it was difficult. I had to choose between career and marriage, you know. And it was so difficult. Then one day, I just said to myself, you know what? I'm going to look for help, and I'm going to look for help within. You know, and I, and that was how I drew very close to God sometime last year. And God just said, you know what, leave the marriage. So what happened to you? Yeah, I, I left the marriage and uh, spoke with her, spoke with my, parents, my mom and a couple of other very few people that I was accountable to. <sighs> then I... So you left the marriage. So what happened to you within the last two weeks, maybe that's hearing this? Okay, yeah, so I was, I was healing. I knew I needed to heal. But I didn't want to speak uh, to any therapist, and I didn't want to speak to any pastor. In fact, I just left all of that, and I just faced my career. Then last two weeks, when I, a friend of mine you know, invited me to church and said, you know what, um, come here and listen to what you know, is being taught here about things like this. And I, and I was there two weeks ago, and you preached and spoke about emotional baggage. And, and for me, I, was, I broke down because I, I wish I knew all the things I know now then, you know, probably I would have handled it differently. But at the point where I am now, last Sunday, especially last Sunday, it was like God used you, sir, to let me know that, you know what, I have healed you. You know? Wow. Yeah. That, that was it for me. That was it for me because, wow. yeah, God literally just everything, 
you know, God said, you know what, I have healed you, you Amen. know. So, yeah, Amen. so I want to say thank you so much, sir. Thank you. You know, God bless you. I really appreciate, you know, you've done a whole lot, you know, thank not you. just for everybody, for me in particular, you know, and wow. I want to say God bless you. I really thank appreciate, you. sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Praise God. Wow. All those very powerful stories. All those very powerful stories. Can I get a bottle of water? Why did I mean something? No, I didn't say open it. I just said a bottle of water. I didn't say open it. I just said a bottle of water. Did you see? He wasn't listening. The reason why I'm saying so is that everybody has a programming. Every time I ask for a bottle of water, they open it. Now I asked for a bottle of water. I said, don't open it. And he said, yes, sir. And he opened it. <laughs> you need to ask yourself, what program is running in me? Because everyone has a program. But this is why I want the water. You need to give me, okay, is it? Is it? It's not going to link here. This is water. If I put it in the freezer, the way you will drink will be different. Because the state has changed. Yes or no? If I boil it, you will not be able to drink it down your throat. Because the state has changed. Yes or no? Your state determines your choices. Same water in the fridge. Your responses, you drink a... Oh, hot water. Ooh, 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 ooh. Why? Because of the state. The biggest mistake people make when they marry in marriage is this. What they choose to marry, they choose from a wrong state. So you see someone that, there's a way your body is boiling, like he said. The way you are in love, eh? That state is too much. The thing is hurting you. You are boiling. Your state determines your reaction. So what you want to do is to be at a calm stage. That's why you tell some people, when you break up, give it some months before you date again. No, they don't understand. And the reason why that some people use another relationship to get over another relationship, which is a terrible thing anyway. But why do we say that? We're just saying that, can you kindly change your state? Can you kindly change your states? I was speaking to a guy and I noticed something. I want to tell you something. He dates when he's in trouble. That's when he finds a girlfriend. He, he himself did not realize. I said, your first girlfriend, what happened? He told me, uh, I just got to this country this and this and this was happening, I just dated her and they got married and ended up as a disaster. The second girl, what happened? Uh, uh -huh. My second girl, this happened. You just notice. And he didn't realize that the pattern of destruction was that when he comes into a place where he needs support, what he's looking for is support, what he, looks, what he gets is a wife. Then he keeps breaking up and he maybe taken the second divorce, the third divorce, the fourth divorce. Glory to God. Just like some of you. The person you are trying to help is who you end up dating. Hey, whoa. I told them in, in, the third, in the other service, the person you are trying to help is who you end up what? Dating. Glory to God. That's who you end up dating. Mother, Sam <laughs> what a Mother Teresa. The person you're trying to help. When you met him, he was not dating you had in mind though. But from helping him, helping him, helping him, you began to fall in love with your project. Who knows, who knows what I'm talking like about? No, now. Do you know what I'm talking about? Who wants to tell me a story? If you want to tell me a story, wave your hands. Let me see. You want to tell me a story? Thank you. God bless you. Give her the microphone.
Just make it short. Two minutes. Summary. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So I met this guy sometimes and it wasn't working. And I've found out from people, a lot of people tell me, oh, you like to date ambitious guys like you. So I decided, okay, you know what? This time around, I'm not going to date someone who is ambitious. Maybe I will walk him through having an ambition. So... <laughs> <laughs> then I started building him and it started from him not having an accommodation and I moved him into my apartment <laughs> wow that decision is three in one house strength did food allowance did sex did <laughs> <laughs> ah, my God. Continue, continue, continue. You're doing well. <laughs> continue, you're doing well. But that was the oldie. That's not the new you. Yes, exactly. Continue. So, um, it was in 2020. I had to call him. I said, you know what, guy? What do you want to do with your life? Because I go to work every day. I come back. You're watching Game of Thrones. You have serious that you have gone through, you've not had your bath, you've not even brushed your teeth, and I am coming from work having to ask you, babe, what do you want to eat for dinner? What do you want me to make and all that? So, you know, and um, it was, the pandemic was upon us. We started hearing about it, and I found out from him, what exactly do you want to do? He told me he would like to go for his master's, and I said, okay, you know what? I'll give you a million naira. <laughs> My sister, what's your phone number? <laughs> this brother is interested. <laughs> this brother is interested. <laughs> this brother is interested. <laughs> you have been praying for this kind of woman. <laughs> this brother, you have been, you have been, you have been interceding. Ah, my father, my father, my father, my father. Wow. Those of you online, you cannot understand the vibe that is here. <laughs> continue, continue. You give a millionaire, at least to start with, you know. Yes. So, he has a brother in the U.S. I said, you know what? Your brother can also assist you with a millionaire. Your dad can also assist you. And all of a sudden, I just saw him started playing tantrums. It was not come for table with me not giving him my ATM card. During the pandemic, we were together. I realized we went to one of the supermarkets on um, Admiralty, and it was, we took an Uber because then we couldn't really walk. So I said, okay, um, babe, do you want to go settle the driver outside while I go inside to settle the news? So he felt the fact that people were watching him at the supermarket, not bringing out the card from his pocket, and I'm having to be the one to do the pay. I'm like, dude, you need to understand boundaries. Like, I can't be convenient to giving you my card, my ATM, though I transfer to you, but I will not feel free to giving you my card, you know. At so, least... more than transfer now, he wants you to give him a card. Yes. Hallelujah. <laughs> and you're not paying tight at this time, or you're not paying tight. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Continue. So, um, you are doing well. I, so, but over time, I just realized the fact that he didn't have so much. He didn't even have the dreams for me to even assist to build on. And he wasn't even aspiring. So, I was at that point in time, I just knew I was in the wrong relationship. And the fight was always every day. The fight and the was, fight was about money. It was, it never makes sense. It could be, oh, you came back, um, somebody dropped you. And every of my clients I am dating. So, he started having inferiority complex. You know, I just realized it comes with the pattern of guys that you have to assist. So it was at that point I said, you know what, any guy that would have, I have to assist, definitely comes with a complex issue because you would have a problem. I, I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't say that. I, I think that's generalization. There are times you will have to assist somebody. Assisting someone is not a project. 
You know, there, there are times that maybe I don't have money and my wife needs to chip in some extra amount of money there. You know, but it's, that's not a project. A project is a project. From beginning to the end, you are spending. That's a project. Assistance is that I stop they are filling the gaps. I can, and that's why we are there. Okay, thank you. Thank you for sharing. All right. Please, let's turn to James chapter 2. Let me preach my sermon. This is becoming too interesting. James chapter 2 verse 18. The Bible says, yes, a man may say, thou hast faith and I have works. Show me thy faith without works. And I will show you by faith by works. It says, it says, thou believest there is God. So let me just jump to verse, verse 17. He says, even so, if it had not works, referring to faith, it's dead, been alone. Well, what I wanted to really say here is that when it comes to marriage, there are supernatural laws when it comes to marriage, but there are also natural laws. And what the Bible says is that if you keep using your faith and you don't do what you should do naturally, your faith will eventually be dead and not work. That's what it's saying. So, in this, in this season, as we talk about relationship, no matter how much prayer we're praying, there are natural things we have to do that will help us offload, offload emotional baggages, that will help us attract relationships, and that will help us maintain relationships. That's what I'm going to today. Okay. So let's take another step backwards and look at that scripture. John chapter 4. I want to lay the scripture foundation and we're going to all of the teaching. John chapter 4 verse 16. The Bible says, And Jesus said unto the woman in at the well, It says, Go and call thy husband and come here. And the woman said, I have no husband. And Jesus said, You have well said, I have no husband. For thou art had how many husbands? This is my challenge. Some of you are looking for one. This woman had five. You must read the Bible. This is in the Bible. This woman had five. When the world population was smaller. So all the people that said there are no men. This woman had five. So the first thing. So you know I said something very powerful about water. I said your state affects your choice. That's why some of you. If you married two years before you married. You'll have married somebody else. If you marry two years after you marry, you'll marry somebody else. Because it's your state that affects your choice. So what you want to do as a single person is this. You have to be in the best state possible to be able to choose the best person possible. And if you cannot be in the best state, you have to leverage relationship that has good states. So that you can help make a good choice. But the second thing I want to say is this. Is the issue with casting mentality. I wanted to see this. The Bible says, Jesus Christ told the woman, you've had five husbands. Once you think love is cast, love will be cast to you. Once you think good men are cast, good men will be cast to you. Once you think good husband are cast, it will be cast to you. And let me tell you something. You are right. Either you believe that love is cast or love is what? Available. You're very correct. Anyone you believe is right. But the question is this. This is a question to you. The question is that do you realize that your mentality determines your reality? Your mentality determines your reality. So if you understand that, maybe, and these are internal workings. These are internal workings. Because you ask somebody, why do you stay in an abusive relationship? And the reason why they stay there is the fear they will not get something else. Because fundamentally they have what? A scarcity mentality. So what I want to say to you is this. How do you deal, how do you deal with that mentality? Glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. So that's the second thing. Your mentality de determines your attraction. Then the third thing is this. This is a very powerful thing. Oh, wow. As singles, you need to ask yourself what your problem is. Do you have problem attracting or you have problem maintaining? This woman in this scripture, what was her problem? Attracting or maintaining? Exactly. Because some of you, your prayer point, the Father, give me somebody. But you have always had somebody. But you have not been able to maintain somebody. The question is that, it's not Father, give me somebody. It's me, Father, give me wisdom 
to maintain the person you've given me. Because it's not as if you've never had relationships. But there's just a way that those things normally collapse. And you have to fix it. So I'm only saying that let's dig to the root of the problem. So a lot of people are praying. So let me ask all of you here. How many of you, attraction is a problem for you? Attracting people is a problem for you. Just wave your hands. Can we be honest? Just wave. Very, I, I love the people who wave in. The people who wave in, just very few in number. They're not even up to 10%. All of you online, if it's attraction, right? Attraction. How many of you here, is it that how to keep a relationship? That's the issue for you. Raise up and let me see. Just wave, let me see. So the many of you, what are you, married? What? 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 Eh, attraction, you're not saying what you want. Okay. <laughs> glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. So, so in this service, we want to talk about how to attract. So the first thing I began to talk about is states. Is states. You need to ask yourself, am I in a good state to even attract a good thing? When you feel very negative, and this is what I'm going to, when you feel negative, see, the way, there are laws of, of the mind, the laws of the mind. One of the things your mind does is that whatever will hurt you, your mind prevents you from it. Whatever will hurt you, your mind prevents you from it. So, if in your mind, you've labored relationship pain, or you've labored men or women pain. You know what, you do, what happened? Your mind, after some time, will what? Would what? Redirect you from it. So you will think you're not attracting. Meanwhile, you're the one that's been caught up. Let me give an example. Some years ago, I went to stay with a friend near the airport. As the plane are descending, I would just hear, oh, ah, I'll wake up. Then I'll sleep back. Then I'll wake up, I'll sleep back. So I told him, I said, ah, how do you sleep in this place? Oh, I cannot sleep because of the plane. Say, don't worry. Just three days, you'll stop hearing the planes again. I said, really? I said, okay. Ladies and gentlemen, it was not to three days. By the second day, I'd stop hearing the planes. Then he explained the concept to me. He said, anything your mind cannot recognize is silence. It's the reticulate, at, at, it's a, it's a at, um, what do you call that thing? It's RAS. I think it's reticulate articulated system. He said, your mind will silence it. He said, because your mind wants to keep you... He said, the problem with mad people is that mad people respond to all stimulus. That's why they are mad. So what human beings don't notice, a madman notices. He said, but for you to be saying, your mind makes sure that the only thing you notice are the things that have meaning to you. He said, that's how your mind keeps you sane. I said, wow, what does it mean in life? Once your mind notices that you've labored relationship, men or women as pain, your mind will make sure you don't notice them. And you will keep praying, but your mind will make sure that you don't notice them. Because in your mind, you've labeled, this is pain, this is pain, this is pain, this is pain. And I'm saying so to you because this is the first, the first job of relationship has to be first internal. So a lot of people want, and I'm saying so because once you've said relationship is pain, L let me do something. Who here? Who here? Uh, Lord, help me. Okay. When you fly in a plane, I have someone that hold the seat when the plane is about to land. Why? It's scary, right? What about those that don't hold the seat? What? Same experience. See the way their mind have interpreted it. So, someone that is flying, he will, there's a way his mind has attached. I'm only saying that that experience of the plane taking off or landing is a neutral experience. But why it creates fear into you is what you have labeled on it. Why it's neutral to you is what you have labeled on it. But what it does eventually is that whatever label you put on that landing and taking off a plane becomes what you experience. So, once you say that, that thing is a scary experience. As soon as the plane is getting up, you just hold your seat. Because that's your response to what a scary experience. 
once you say relationship is not good or bad, but once you say that men are cause pain, relationship cause pain, women cause pain, guess what? Your reaction will be that of pain. And because your mind doesn't want to have pain, it will start pushing you away from relationships. So your, re- your delay as a single person is self-induced. That's where I'm going to. So your delay as a single person is what? Self-induced. It's the way you teach your mind. You may be looking for the relationship, it doesn't matter. It's self-induced. You will not find it. Glory to God. I said 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 glory to God. So let's talk about attraction because that's what we want to talk about. How to be, how to attract what you want. So the first thing is this. You must have a very healthy, oh no, I, I can't start from that. I, I, I jumped something. Yeah, so, so let's talk about relationship red flags. Just relationship red flag. Number one, relationship you watch out for. Number one, undefined relationship. Relationship red flag. What did I say? Undefined relationship. Where you think, where you think you're dating, but the person doesn't know you're dating. And um, babe, what are we doing? Let's see how it goes. What? They are what? Give another word. What did they say? What? What are we doing? Let's go with the flow. <laughs> Let's go with the flow. <laughs> you were asking, am I even ninja? <laughs> Which one? What, what's flowing? So relationship is like, number one, relationships are not defined. Someone says, when do you define the relationship? You have conversation. See, let me tell you something. Someone says, when is too, too soon to ask? You, let me tell you something. The problem is this. It's not a flag. It's a, it's a journey. If I'm going from here to Ibadan, how do I know I'm on the right path? In 30 minutes, I should be towards toll gates. Yes or no? So, I'm not saying that we should get to Ibadan. I'm only saying that we should be making progress. So, progress means if I've been talking for three months, what does progress look like? I'm not saying introduce me to your parents. But at three months, you should be able to tell me, oh, I actually like you. I'm actually trying to, you know, I'm, I want to ask you out. And this is what I want to do. You used to tell me. But let's go with the flow. Flow where? Let's keep it going. Keep what's going. Someone said, let's have fun. When they say, let's have fun, you just tell your friend. You say, my brother, what they used to play is in Kingsway. And I'm not a toy. Don't use me to play. Glory to God. I said glory to God. I, are you getting it this morning? So one of the relationships, because a lot of people are in relationship with, it, it's even amazing because sometimes it's even for years and they're the one that think they're dating this person and this person cannot categorically say you're dating me. The second relationship I avoid is this. Relationship that is one-sided. Where you find out that all of the sacrifice, everything, is only one person that is doing it. Don't be in a relationship where you are tolerated. Be in a relationship where you are celebrated. <laughs> Glory to God. So that's another red flag. Relationship that is one-sided. You are the one, only one that gives gifts. Gift does not come back the other way. You are the only one that calls. Calls doesn't come back the other way. At the end of the day, you begin to feel small in your life. The third red flag in relationship is this. Hmm. Oh, glory to God. Huh. Relationship where you can't be yourself. I don't even know how you exist. Relationship, so, you know, <laughs> every time you see your boyfriend, you must use makeup. Are you feeling hot? Because some people are like that. Every time they, they, they need to use makeup, they need to be... See, you don't understand. See, you can act, but you can't act forever. Relationship is not about acting. It's about being yourself. You can't be yourself. You go out to eat. What do you want to eat? Um, um, you order first. 
And the reason why is that you don't know if what you order can cause problem. But if you're in a relationship, what kind of person am I dating I can't be myself? My brother, I feel like using my hand though to eat this pound of yam. So if I use my hand today, it means I'm an illiterate. Because how long will you, how long will you hide? How long will you, you're going to get tired along the way. And the person is going to say to you that you deceived me. You know what they're laughing? They've had the experience like that. <laughs> Glory to God. I said praise the Lord. I said praise the Lord. All right. So let, let's just jump and close the service, please. You know, I, I, I thought... <laughs> Someone say, ah. Hey, <laughs> Pastor George. See my assistant pastors. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So, how to increase your attra attra um, um, attraction. So, the first thing is this. This is the first thing. This is the first thing. Attraction and beauty are different. That's what you should know. Attraction and beauty are what are different. You can be beautiful and not attractive. Yes or no? Yes. Thank you. That, that's, that's good. That we can, you can be beautiful and not what? Attractive. Because attraction is more than skin and shape. See what the Bible, the way the Bible defines attraction, the Bible calls it charm. It's called charm in the Bible, attraction. Proverbs chapter 31, Proverbs chapter 31 verse 30. Give me the new living translation. Proverbs 31 verse 30. You can be, so what a lot of born again, so a lot of ladies, so a lot of guys focus on, you know, a lot of ladies focus on beauty, but instead of them focus on attraction. A lot of guys focus on some other thing instead of they focus on attraction. See what the Bible says. Proverbs 31 verse 30. New Living Translation. Is it on the screen? See, see what the Bible says. He says, charm is deceptive. Charm is talking about attraction. He says, and beauty does not last forever. So beauty is going to fade ultimately. He said, but attraction... Attraction. So what makes people attractive? So what makes, so if I see two people, what makes this person attractive? This also is essential for married people because even though you're married, you want to be attractive. What makes you attractive, number one, is a healthy self-esteem. Let me tell you something there. There's just something about people that believe in themselves that makes them stand out. Um, there's a guy in this church, he, he's an actor. So I know he used to have a lot of girls in his past. Very close to past family judge now. You know, he used to have a lot of, lot of girls in his past. I asked him, I said, all these girls, how do you pick them? He said, no, 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 I know girls I can sleep with. I said, well, how do you know them? He said, any girl I talk to that cannot look me in the face, she's a victim. I'm telling you. He, he said, because they don't have that self-confidence, and I'm this five-star guy that they feel as if they have to please me. He said, so eventually, I overwhelm them with my presence and they can't but please me. Praise God. You know what I'm saying, so? A lot of church girls lack self-confidence. So. When you see girls in town, they don't go to the toilet two and three by four like you people go to church. Just when you go, sometimes you go to the toilet, four of them go to the toilet together. We are, we are going to the toilet. We are going to the, what are you going to say? We all need emotional support. To do what? But town girls, when you go to a club, the girls say, even they came together, go and sit down, young guys. Don't smell my, don't block me. Let me be on my table with my drink. The reason why is that they understand, they understand that once I can. Once I have this very nice confidence and appeal, and this is the appeal, because we always keep preaching that in Christ, I have confidence, I'm beautiful. But most girls don't feel that way. It's until their friends stay with them, they feel they're beautiful. Praise God. 
I said, praise God. Watch when service is over. The first to leave are the ones that are not very attractive. Even when I stand outside, I see all sorts. You will see, notice me. They go like, <laughs> I didn't see the person, no. Did not see the corner eye. When they come back again. <laughs> oh, go like, go like, go like. I say, hi, I say, hi, Pastor. <laughs> Watch it. When I say, hi, I say, Pastor, no, 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 I'm shy. But that was all they were waiting for all along. Did I catch you? But the major thing, the major thing. See, I'm only saying these are things that we should be taught from when we're young. Just a lot of, just a lot of, just this. And the reason why self-confidence is important is this. Is what you value yourself, what else will value you with. So if you behave, watch this now. No matter how beautiful you are. If you behave as if there's something wrong with you, then the person on the other side is going to think that there's something really wrong with you. So, you know, you're like, why are you rubbing? Why is she rubbing her body like that? You know, you, 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 you all saw this African magic movie where they bring a new game into the game and the girl will be doing like this and they're like, well, why is she doing like this? Because, because it's not as if there's something in her body, but her body language shows that there's a level of discomfort that she has and she's portraying it and projecting on the other person and the best just feels somehow. And I'm saying this, see, I'm, I'm a very honest person. I know why church people make mistakes. That's why I'm saying this. I'm saying this because church people, and please, can I just talk to the girls for a minute? The guys know. They pack a Range Rover. They know it intimidates you. That's why they packed it there. And church girls, you say, ah, he's a Christian and has a Range Rover. Listen, it can be a Christian idiot. And that's why I told you that you marry for my state. So if your state is poverty, the way the Range Rover will overshadow you. You are not responding to him again, you are responding to car. How do you know? Detach him from the car, would you respond that way? Uh. If he came without the car and sat next to you, how would you respond? But now he's in the G Wagon. See how you have responded. The car has overshadowed you. Glory to God. And, and, and you know, and, and let me tell you why we church people. Because we church people naturally, we tend to be introverted. They always tell you, don't go out, don't talk to people. So we are always, so we don't have the opportunity to be able to do this and do that and this and do that. You know, that kind of thing. But when you see people that are, are not, when you see people that are in town. Lord Walker. <laughs> Lord Walker. <laughs> Didn't you read this by the scripture, John chapter 4? The Bible says the Samaritan woman, Jesus Christ asked him. That was why she had five husbands. She knew how to talk. Good self-esteem. So I've been divorced five times. She should not be hiding at home. Jesus Christ said, give me water. I said, uh-uh. Give you water. Tell me what you want. The Bible says, she didn't say, okay. She could have, if she had a low self-esteem, she would not be the conversation. She would just say, okay, this is water. No, she didn't say that. She built a conversation and said that. Uh, why being a Jew? Ask me a gentle for water. Is it water you really want? Or something else? Because there are different kinds of water. Oh. <laughs> Praise God. But you, you but, but, but when they talk to you, I'm, I'm telling you, things like this. Just confidence. Remember that this lady was divorced five times. She didn't even feel it. You will not be telling yourself, it's because I'm a single mother. I'm this, I'm that. Listen, all those labels, are the one, you're the one telling yourself that. Nobody even sees it on you. And the thing is that, this is where I'm going to. Once you feel negative about yourself, the person will feel it. Because as a man thinketh in his heart, so we see. Once you feel negative about yourself, no man will like me. No girl will like me. This is the same way they will feel about you. You will send out that same, that same signal to people. 
and that thing will destroy your prayers. And that's one of the things you want to do for yourself is self-love. Yeah, just being confident in who God has made you. I'm beautifully and wonderfully made. Where's the lady that said last week that she was not beautiful? Tell me what has happened since that time. I'm sure. I've, I've not heard from you. Tell me what has happened since that time. Yeah. Come and stand here, please. Face us. Praise God. Um, first no, no, just of, face, face the camera, yeah. Okay, first of, um, when I go home, when I finish undressing, usually when I look at the mirror, I'll just be like, mm, you're ugly. But when, I, when the thought came, I just changed it back. I'm beautiful. Look at you. So, a friend of mine called me yesterday and said he saw the video trending. And he felt bad that I, he didn't know that I was like that. And I was like, you are beautiful. You die here. I speak. Ah, stop it. Don't do that. So, when I got outside and, you know, I started walking in a way that I don't usually walk. Like... Normally, if I'm walking, I bounce and I don't, I'm walking that I'm a female. I'm beautiful. So, this is how I'm supposed to be walking. <laughs> Did you get some nice messages over there? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, hey. See NLP testimony already. <laughs> tell me, tell me. <laughs> Are you blushing? <laughs> Are you blushing? <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, I'm usually at Tommy, yeah, but I started going out yesterday. Let's say we have hangouts now, so definitely. Praise God. <laughs> you know, um, someone was telling me that online, someone said that, please, can I have a number? Please, can I have the boy just asking, can I have a number? Can I have a number? I, I, how come this guy is single? Can I? But the point is this. What stopped everything? Just what she believed about herself. Write down. What do I believe about myself that is hindering my marriage? Write it down. What do I believe about myself that is hindering my marriage? That is hindering my marriage? Write it down. What do I believe? And you need to re reflect. What do I believe about myself? Let me tell you how it affected me. You know, I became a pastor when I was young. And I told myself, nobody could want to marry a pastor. I didn't know where I got that from. I said, no, no, no girl that is smart, that is beautiful, that is great, will want to marry a pastor. A pastor that has nothing. Because there's always something you're not going to have that will be the weapon that will be used against you. Glory to God. Let me take the second point quickly. So, so that's the first point. So the second point, how to become attractive is this. Learn to have good conversation. Ah, this is where learn to have good conversation. Let's go back to the story of the woman at the well. When it's a good conversation, it's not just good conversation um, physically, online, because online has become a well where people meet. What you write online, be careful. And learn to have good conversation online. If I post something, write something there. Someone just, oh, this guy that wrote this way. Wow, that's nice. Let me slide into a DM. Let me check, you know, you know, let me check a page. Even me that you comment on. That's how I just, like, who wrote this? Let me just see. From, see, if you're going to be attractive, you must learn to have good conversation. Bible says it this way. He that must be friendly must what? Must show himself friendly. See, you can't, we can't be talking to you and you keep saying no, yes, no, yes, no, yes. It, it doesn't make sense. If you want to be attractive, attractive people, eh, they know how to talk. Chat, they just chat you up. Sometimes I don't like to talk. Why do you want to marry? If you don't, want to, if you don't, if you don't, if you don't like talking, you should not marry. Because marriage is a lot of talking. Shut up. Hey, how are you? Oh, I'm fine. You know, this culture says, they don't reply. They will just keep you single. Because all the people that you copy in Hollywood, how many of them are married? They're on their fourth or fifth marriage, I hope you know. You'll be copying people that have bad marriages. 
Can't you see the future? It's the truth. So, have good conversation. Hey, how are you? Oh, I'm very fine. And how are you too? Because, see, just having that conversation. Because I'm telling you, you know, you, you, you'll be surprised that some people you call ugly. You, you call them fat. You call them tall. You call them dark. Their, their wife or their husband cannot treat them for anything. You know why? They know how to talk to them. The skin does not matter when you marry you. Instead of you to learn conversation, you are doing body talk. Oh, is, is that what they call it? Yeah, body talk. What? When they slim down the body. Yeah. What? Yeah. Tell me talk. Yeah. Liposuction. Yeah. Yeah, lipo. If you want to do lipo, I mean, that, that's, your, that's what you want to do. That's fine. But there are things you have to work on. Because even if your body changes, if your because attractiveness of a person it's more than body learn how to have conversation and that's why you must be knowledgeable so what do you think about this and this oh you know that's really that's a good idea what about this what about this what about this this is where you talk this is where you talk you keep talking you keep talking you keep talking you keep talking and it shows how intelligent you are look at look at the see Jesus Christ just made it out of the well next thing one whole chapter is full in the Bible I'm not even sure Jesus Christ had energy for the woman. But the woman was chatting him up. Passe, passe. Good conversation. Everybody loves someone that they can have a good conversation with. And when I say good conversation, not conversation that stress. Some people have conversation, but they drink you. It's what I call a good, renew, just refreshing conversation. And such competition comes in the third thing, humor. Hey, you're, you're dating someone. Every time we need to talk, we will get tired though. Every time and we need to talk. You, today, we need to talk. Tomorrow, we need to talk. The, see, I want to ask you, when do we say we need to play? And men, not all play is sex. Because they know you. Once you start, once you start getting play. <laughs> we should never be discussing that because you know the Bible standard, right? Yes. There's a lot of games. There's amusement park. There are beaches. There's Monopoly. There's video game. There's boat cruise. There's um there's um exactly. There's skating. There's a lot of games. There's humor. Bring humor. Bring humor into. Bring humor into your relation. Make it interesting. See, be someone that people want to be with because you are very funny. Learn humor. The seriousness make you look old. Amen. Yeah. Every time, um, we need to talk. Uh, we need to talk. When you say we need to talk, you say, honey, we need to play. <laughs> glory to God. I say glory to God. Some pastors preach it half the time I preach. They don't spend as much time and the whole church will sleep off. Because people don't stay engaged with someone because of time. It's how much the sermon is engaging them. That's what they stay glued to. <laughs> glory to God. So let's let's have some let's, let's let's have some fun. Fun over simple simple things. She used his hand. He said, "Ah, uh -uh baby, this one is five-fold ministry. Just say something that's funny. Don't make life serious." Be coming down. Be coming down. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Especially in this generation where being saucy, being rude, being quiet, being standoffish is culture. That's why Lopez Singulo. Being saucy, being rude, being standoffish is not culture. 
So how do you learn to be attractive? So a lot of people think attractive is about beauty. Attractive is more than beauty. It has to do with your mindset. It has to do with your personality. And that's why I said to you, all of you that anyone that has an emotional baggage, you have to offload it because your emotional baggage will make you un unattractive. It's going to make you unattractive. Because as you are there, you have a heavy heart. As you are there, you have trust issues. Those people don't want to walk around eggshells around you. Glory to God. So be attractive. Just cool down. Uh, have you not seen me outside before? I'm always saying hi to people. So I say, why do you smile a lot? Because life is not that hard. If you see me, I'm always smiling. I, I don't know why you make your face hard like a little rock. <laughs> Who does not have challenges? I have. You have. But the Bible says, be of good chair. That's what it says. Say, well, be of what? Good chair. So why am I laughing? God said, be of what? Good chair. Bible says, laughter do it like medicine. One time someone told me, ah, you always laugh as if you have no problems. I said, what else will I do now? So if I have problems, should I cry? Praise God. I said, praise God. The last thing, be where the people you are. Be around where the people you are looking for. Ladies, eh? I know they say, you can't go to this, you can't go to that. Go to where you can go to. Go to where you can go to. Where are responsible men? Business conference, attend one. Where are responsible men? Entrepreneurs workshop, attend one. Where are responsible men? Gym, attend one. They are not in gym. Ah, even this brother said no. <laughs> Everywhere I've mentioned, you will find good men. And bad men. Men are there. What if any ladies? What if any ladies, right? My brother, stand up. Just stand. Stand and come. Just stand there. Go forward. Go forward. Go forward. Go forward. It's enough. As far as your eyes can see. <laughs> Praise God. Where do you find the ladies? There are things that get ladies' attention. You find them in the supermarket. You find them making their hair. You find them... You know, you find them making their hair. You find them, where? What? Spas. You find them there. You know, praise the Lord. But please, build good conversation. Hey, how are you? So, when you notice someone looking at you, don't look away and try to, someone looking at you, not hurrying away. Why are you hurrying away for? When someone looking at you, you... What's going on? There was a connection going on there. Oh, praise God. What well, are we are praying for? That little bit signs and wonders. So you come to church, you see this guy trying to get your attention, and I start hurrying. No, slow down. Like, slow down. Don't say anything, just slow down. Let him catch up. And say, hi. You say, oh, good afternoon. Give him the time. You are single now. So give him the hi. So um, what's going on? You mentioned what's going on. This and this and this. Oh, the, the truth is, some of them waste your time. We know. Yeah, but that's part of the process. Ah, so okay. Can I have your number? Oh, sure, you can have my number. So I say I don't give my numbers. I don't know how that makes sense. You want to marry? Don't give her your number. Is there an angel that will marry you? We will know your number by word of prophecy. You say, someone said, I want to know if you're serious or not. Okay. Well, just know that. Any questions before we close? Ah, that brother just raised up his hand instantly. No, no, no. The brother with a, yes, they'll give you a microphone. The way you raised up your hand, I see you're waiting for me. You notice, Abby? 
Uh, any comments? Yeah. Hello. Yeah. For Let's see your face. I think of your glasses. Or do you have Apollo? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Thank you for such an impactful message. Um, I wrote some things down. So at the beginning of the sermon, you said something. You said the best um, time to make a decision to marry when you're in the best state. And of course, you know, technically states, it's a property. So I'm just going to ask, it will be, I suppose it will be quite relating. So what would you consider to be the best state a man could be before making that decision? Thank you. Will you hold the microphone closer to your mouth and say it? I, I, I heard you, but I want to make sure everybody heard you. You know, we are, all, we are both from the same place, so I heard you. You know? <laughs> you know? So hold the microphone closer to your mouth, yeah. And just in one line, the question, yes. Hello. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so what is the best uh, possible state someone can be before making that decision? Okay, good. So um, a good state would be a state of a lot of peace and a lot of wholeness. So it's a place where you are single and you are satisfied. That's a good place. You're single, so you don't feel a desperation. You're single, you're whole. There's nothing you're healing from, and you're what? Satisfied. So, when you go in that stage, you're looking for something additional, not that you're hurting, looking for something to feel, feel you. All right, thank you very much. Does that help you, my sir? Does that help you? Yes. That, that helps you. Okay. Who's going to change something from what we've learned today? Okay. The lady, yeah, let's, let's just go. There's a lot of, yeah, please, you just move also. Thank you. Good afternoon, church. Good afternoon. Like, I, I really learned a lot of what you said. And I've been a victim of my own self. Suffered delay for like over 20 years now. So, and I'm going to be taking to note some of the things because as much as I wanted So which to, of them particularly applied to you so that we can learn from you also? Um, I've always wanted to be married since I was 23. Yeah. But from hurts and um, I kind of suffered violence from my elder brother so it, it kind of um, gave me that low self-esteem. So in as much as I wanted to be in a relationship I didn't think I was good enough because most, most of the things he said I didn't know it trapped me in. So even when I see people like get into communications, I can't keep up friendship. I, I want to notice something. <laughs> and this is why I said the first is a selfie held esteem. Because once Todd John verse 2 says, Beloved, I wish you prosper even as your soul prospered. And I said, the quality of your relationship is the quality of your soul. So watch this now. She's not able to do other this is why marriage counseling fail. This is why it fails. You're not able to do other things because your soul is broken. So even the communication, she's not able to communicate. Not because she doesn't know what to say or how to say it, but because within her, the soul is what broken. What most marriage counseling do is that they fix the body of the car, but the engine is not. The engine refers to the soul. So that's why all of you that are new today, what you have to do is to go to our YouTube page at Harvest TV, subscribe, and watch the messages that change that fixes the soul first. Then these other things about conversation, all of those things make sense because the soul has been what fixed. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so like you said just a few minutes ago, peace, wholeness, and a place of satisfaction or being satisfied. I'm gonna be taking that note in and hope that by next day I should be. Connected Amen. and married. Thank you. Amen. Amen. God, God bless you, man, for sharing with us. Yes, so who wants to share? There's a lady in, ye in yellow. There was someone over there in the middle also. There's a lady here in yellow. Yeah, and we'll just close with that. Yeah, I know you don't want to close, but we'll close with that. Yeah. Hi, church. Yeah, you can have your seat, actually. So, Pastor, um, this is coming from emotional baggage for growing up as a child. Yeah. So I didn't have any happy moments with my father while growing up. So 
Because of that, every time I'm always unhappy around him, there was nothing to be happy with him. So most of the time he'll tell me, why are you frowning your face? I'll frown my face the more because I just want him to know I'm not happy. So I just grew up with that state. Like most of the time people see me and they'll be like, why are you frowning? You have a very strong face. That's the way I grew up. And I just noticed it and sometimes I was, okay, let me try and smile. I'll just be putting up a fake smile and I'll feel like this is not me. And I stop. Put on this face for let me see. <laughs> <laughs> no, like walking on the road and you just be smiling. How would I just be smiling anyhow? Like? <laughs> so I don't know how to work on this, honestly. Okay. <laughs> so I will use that question to answer all questions that relate to this. People always keep saying that this will happen in the past. How do I work on it? You need to learn something. You can take charge of your present and your future. That's it. The same way you, at some point, you made your mind to not to smile when you were younger. Make up your mind. I will start smiling. And start, even if it's fake. Start. From fake, it's become real. Glory to God. A lot of things are fake that you're wearing, like your wig. Is it yours? But do you wear it well? Uh, wear the smile well also. Uh, after some time, we'll not be to differentiate. Yes, if it's real or fake. The key thing is to decide. Shall we pray?